A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh believers. Briefly allow me to look at uh, some of the types of fasting. The types of fasting. What are they? We have four types of fasting. Number 1 we have compulsory fasting. For instance, fasting the holy months of Ramadan as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran chapter 2 verse number 183. Number 2 we have mustahabu fasting, optional fasting. For instance, fasting the whole month of uh, Rajab, Shaban, fasting on Monday and Thursday and other days, there is no problem. We have haram fasting. For instance, fasting during Eid days is totally haram. Or fasting in order, you understand, in order to mistreat your partner so that you cannot engage with her in two sexual intercourse is totally prohibited. We also have what we call macro fasting, detestable fasting. For, for instance, fasting on the first and tenth of the holy months of Muharram. You understand? All these are detestable. In case you overdo them, you end up getting sins. Allow me to throw more light on the following still. Kindly allow me to throw more light on these types of fasting as we've seen. Regarding compulsory fasting, we give an example. For instance, fasting the whole month of Ramadan, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quranic chapter 2, verse number 183. In case we do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases our taqwa. You understand? We become more pious. In case we become more pious, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers our prayers, increases our lifespan and others. Still under compulsory fasting, we have also kawa fasting, compensating for those missed days which you are not in place to fast during the holy mass of Ramadan. You understand my brother or sister? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran chapter 2, verse number 184, that kana ala safarin min ayamin ukhar. In case maybe you're not in place to fast, during the whole month of Ramadan, you have to compensate for them. You understand? For those missed days. And in case maybe you are like uh, uh, a traveler, you have also to compensate for your missed days. Still under compulsory fasting, we have what we call kafara fasting. For instance, in case your parents passes away, it's upon the elder son, you understand? To compensate for the prayers and fasting of his or her parents. You understand? Actually, it's also advisable in case maybe you may be too sick. You understand? And you fear that you may end up dying. You have to put it in your will. Leaving maybe a portion of your will, a portion of your, your property, your money, that this money will be paid for those people who will be compensating. You understand? For your fasting, which you missed when you are still in good state. Another compulsory fasting is what we call nazil, you understand? Or promise, fulfilling your vows. Here we see it's also compulsory. For instance, in Surah Al-Insan, for instance, in Surah Al-Insan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Al-Bayt, Imam Ali, you understand, for Uthmatu Zahra, uh, alayhi salam. When Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein fell sick, Imam Ali, you understand, had to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in case, you heal these children of men, I'll have to, we shall have to fast with the Ahlbayt, alayhi musalatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in certain insan verse number 7. Yufuna bin nazil, they had to fulfill their vo, you understand, their promise. So this is also another category of compulsory fasting. Another category of compulsory fasting is fasting, you understand, instead of Tamatta'u in Haji. Let's assume you go and make pilgrimage to the Holy Kaaba and you don't have maybe anything to sacrifice. You understand? You don't have anything to sacrifice, an animal to sacrifice. You have to fast here 10 days, 3 days when you are still in pilgrimage and the 7 days when you return back. In Quran chapter 2, verse number 196, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. 
Uh, then regarding uh, category number two of fasting, we've looked at compulsory. Then Adam Stahabo, we said fasting, for instance, the whole month of Rajab, Shaban, and other days. Fasting itself has got a lot of rewards, my brother or sister. In Hadith al Qudus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aswaumali wa ana ajiz alayhi. You fast for my sake, I'm the one to give you rewards. I'm the one to reward you. For other actions of worship, for instance, prayers, pilgrimage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigns his angels, Rakib and Ratid, to give us rewards. But regarding fasting, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who rewards us himself. You understand? Therefore, let's utilize this opportunity. Let's always engage more in fasting. Then number two, as we said in Quran chapter 2, verse number 183, our taqwa increases. In case our taqwa increases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us forgiveness. As we saw in Quran chapter 3, verse number 133 to 134. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you, he increases your sustenance, gives you pious children, increases your lifespan, grants you paradise, makes it rain, as we saw in Quranic chapter, certain of verse number 10, uh, certain of verse number 10 to 12, and certain hold verse number 10. Then we also looked at haram fasting, prohibited fasting. For instance, fasting during uh, the two Idis is totally prohibited. Idi al and Idi. Fitting is totally prohibited. Then finally, my brother, we have what we call detestable fasting or macro fasting. In case you overdo so, it becomes haram. For instance, fasting on the 10th of Muharram. There is a tradition in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, that when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina, upon reaching Medina, he found the Jews fasting and he had to imitate them. He had to fall them that in case uh, that when he asked them why do you fast they said that we are fasting because this is the day when the children of Bani Israel we are rescued kindly quote the following my brother or sister we looked at the fabrication of a hadith and among them you understand was economic factors for instance the tradition that in case you buy some onions from a town x you enter paradise for instance uh need for reputation from the hadith narrators, and among other factors for the fabrication of hadith like need to destroy Islam. And in this case, you understand, regarding this tradition is aimed at lowering Islam, at lowering Islam under the pure lineage of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We all know that on 10th Muharram is when the lead of paradise, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, whose loving and following was, was made mandatory in Quran chapter 42, verse number 23. That's when he was brutally murdered by the tyrant of the time, Yazid ibn Ma'awiyah. That's when he murdered him. Therefore, those Hadith narrators narrated this in order to conceal the evil. Therefore, those Hadith narrators reported this tradition in order to conceal the evil acts of the Bani Umayyads like killing the lead of paradise, the grandson of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. They did so in order for them to jubilate, you understand, to celebrate his martyrdom. Therefore, in case you celebrate by fasting on that day, it will be totally haram. But in case you fast it due to fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no problem. We also say that fasting on the tennis of Muharram, that uh, that's the day, as they say, that uh, when the children of uh, Ban Israel were rescued, that's totally wrong. Why? We said, even the calendar, we said that even the calendar of the Jews, even the calendar of the Jews, when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina. The day he found those people fasting, it wasn't in Muharram. The Jews used to celebrate by fasting. Their fast months, it never fell in Muharram, but it fell in Abib, a Jewish month. 
which was later named Nisan, which always corresponded with Rajab. Therefore, it wasn't in Muharram. Therefore, in case the tradition is there, it's totally fabricated. My brother or sister, you can find that in a book called Al Sirat. You can find that in a book called Al Sirat, Volume 6, uh, Narration 3 and 4. I also found it in the Bible, Deuteronomy. You understand, chapter 16, verse number 1. The month when Allah saved the Bani Israel wasn't Muharram, but it was Abib, which always corresponded to Rajab. In brief, we said we have four types of fasting. The compulsory fasting, like fasting the whole month of Ramadan, Kaba, compensating for your missed days in Ramadan, Kafara, the fasting, the fasting in order to compensate for the fasting of your deceased parents. We also said under compulsory fasting, we have the Nazil, you understand, promising your fasting in order to promise, in fasting to fulfill your vow, as it was done by Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wa salam, and Fatima al-Zahara, in Surat al-Insan, in, in Surat al-Insan, uh, verse number 7 and 8. Then we also said we have the mustahab fasting, the optional or recommended fasting. For instance, fasting during Rajab, Shaban, fasting on Monday and Thursday. There are a lot of rewards. We said we have also some haram fasting. For instance, fasting on the two Idis, Id Fitil and Id Allah. Finally, we said we have what we call or what we call detestable fasting, macro. That in case you overdo so, it becomes haram. For instance, fasting during the day of Ashura, the tenth of Muharram. We said that that hadith that when Prophet migrated from Mecca to Medina, he found the Jews fasting and he had to imitate them. We said that's totally a fabricated tradition. Why? Because in a book called Al Sirat, volume six, narration three and four, the day when the Jews were fasting, whom, whom Prophet found in Medina, we are not fasting on the tenth of Muharram, but we are fasting during their first month in their Jewish calendar. And it always, and it never fell in Muharram, but it always reached in Jewish months called Abib, which always corresponded to Rajab. I also found it in Bible, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16, uh, verse 1, the month Allah saved the Bani Israel was in Muharram, but it was in Abib which always corresponded to Rajab. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our knowledge, to forgive all our deceased relatives and friends with the intercession of Al-Bayt. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.